everybody, welcome back to Drug Talk. As always, I'm your host, Garrett Campbell. Today, we're going to be doing a slideshow presentation and giving you information on lorazepam, or Ativan. Now, before I talk about the medication itself, just keep in mind that this channel is for information purposes only and not to be used as a source for recommendations for your personal health care. And just quickly, if at any time during this video you find the information valuable, please consider leaving a like on this video as it really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. So first, what will we cover in this presentation? First, we're going to talk about how lorazepam works. We're going to talk about some indications or reasons this medication will be prescribed to patients. We're then going to talk about contraindications or reasons a patient would not be able to use lorazepam. We'll discuss dosing with examples. And then we'll finish it off with side effects with percentages. So how does lorazepam or Ativan work? So it binds highly to the GABA benzodiazepine receptor complex without displacing GABA. GABA is considered an inhibitory neurotransmitter because it blocks or inhibits certain brain signals and decreases activity in your nervous system. So when would this medication be prescribed to patients? We often see this medication used to treat anxiety. It can also be used to treat insomnia due to anxiety or due to situational stress. It can be used as a pre-medication for an anesthetic procedure. And we also see it used to treat status epilepticus. Status epilepticus is a continuous seizure for more than 30 minutes or two or more seizures without full recovery of consciousness between them. Now what about contraindications, reasons that a patient would not be able to use lorazepam? So first off, if a patient had a hypersensitivity or allergy to benzodiazepines, they would not be able to use this medication. We wouldn't prescribe this medication to patients with narrow angle glaucoma. This medication cannot be given to premature infants. And we also wouldn't give it to patients with respiratory insufficiency. And finally, lorazepam would not be prescribed to patients who have sleep apnea syndrome. And this is specifically talking about the injectable formulation. Now for some examples of dosing. So first off, in anxiety, the initial dose would typically be 2 or 3 milligrams per day, orally, divided in 2 or 3 daily doses. And then for maintenance therapy, the dose can be between 2 and 6 milligrams per day, orally, this is the usual maintenance dose, uh, again, divided in two or three daily doses. The overall range in this situation would be one to 10 milligrams per day. Now with insomnia due to anxiety, we would typically see a dose of two to four milligrams orally given at bedtime. And in status epilepticus, we would usually see four milligrams given intravenously, and this is gonna be given at a slow rate of two milligrams per minute and as they may repeat the dose in 10 to 15 minutes if needed. Now, as with all medications, there are some side effects or adverse reactions that patients may experience while using lorazepam. So in this case, they may experience asthenia or abnormal weakness 4% of the time. 7% may experience dizziness. 16% may experience sedation. And unsteadiness may occur 3.4% of the time. Patients may also experience depression while using lorazepam. Now some more serious side effects would be acidosis, which could happen less than 1% of the time, and delirium, which would be an abrupt change in the brain that causes mental confusion and emotional disruption. That's all we're going to talk about today with lorazepam or Ativan. As always, I'm very thankful you took the time to come by and watch one of my videos. If you found the information valuable and you'd like to help grow this channel, you can like the videos, share the videos, or most importantly, subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's also some links in the description you can check out as well. That's it for today, take care.